Welcome everyone to this video. As you know, we are great fans of headphone jacks. Even when we're using quality earphones like the Sony one or the Sennheiser that I showed you before. And this of course still has a headphone jack here. And so obviously I can just use it, which I did already for quite some time. And although I usually have headphone jacks, of course I sometimes use Bluetooth, obviously at home sometimes and such, but still a huge fan of headphone jack nonetheless. However, the great day has come that we all have been waiting for for so long, which is someone reverse engineered the aptX lower latency and higher quality Bluetooth codec. Because the normal Bluetooth codec used by stereo audio Bluetooth connections is SPC. SPC standing for low complexity subband codec and its quality is rather not the most awesome. I usually can hear the compression artifacts, especially when the bitrate is not the very highest. So as I said, breaking news stops the presses. Someone finally reverse engineered aptX. Because it is not necessary to send the SPC codec data to the Bluetooth devices, it is also possible to send MP3 and AAC. Um, however, as far as I know, most headsets and such do not support directly MP3 and uh, only latest years some support AAC for Apple compatibility. But aptX is a more professional codec, which was, I think, not invented by Qualcomm. I think they only... They say here developed by Qualcomm, but um, I wonder, was it currently owned? Hmm, original... Ah, okay, because the original aptX algorithm was developed in the 1980s, but you see even this is super old. As part of the PhD research at Queen's University, Belfast School of Electronics, and... Um, Yada, 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 and so on. Aptix is also commonly used in higher-end Bluetooth headsets, and I think it was supposed to have lower latency and also better quality, because this SPC codec is rather not the most awesome. Also, you need to remember, the music usually is compressed, and then it is even recompressed, in theory, adding additional compression artifacts, obviously. Unfortunately, there are a few things on the way to using this. One thing is that since Blues 5, Direct ALSA connection is not supported anymore, so you need to use the Pulse Audio for audio use, which I usually don't like. I like to keep things simple and minimal, as you may have realized. So I like to just play audio by directly interfacing with the ALSA device. And also I usually do not use Bluetooth much, especially on Linux right now. So I had to update and recompile and such here quite some things to get this to work. But the good thing is this works right now. So I now have here some additional, someone took the initiative and defaults to create and maintain here a loose audio other backend. So I got this packaged into work. And what have we running right now? We now have running the Bluetooth daemon here somewhere. So this is libexec Bluetooth D. This is, by the way, all communicating via Dbus. And we have this blue Alza daemon running and then Bluetooth control that we use to first power on, then agent on, default agent, okay. And then pair with this headset. So now you have the MAC address of this headset, enjoy it while it lasts, and um, then connect. And then with this other Bluetooth, you can use here any other program, like you've seen in the last Octane video, flag decode, pipe, Tori Amos, conflict girl, and pipe this to a play with the device blue other HCI and so on the MAC address and then profile A2DP and at least it worked a second ago and it works now as you can see to my surprise I have to say I did not really expect this to get this to work today because often when I do things like this I also had to add some new packages here even um, let's stop this so I had to package at least SPC and also update Blues and packages Blues Alza. From Blues Alza I'm even using a Git snapshot because the last release version of this is requiring some ORTP library that we have not yet packaged and also did not just build. So I realized the latest Git code does not rely on this anymore. So I'm rather using a latest Git snapshot of Blues Alza to avoid this. And now we are going to package this aptX stuff. In the meantime, this is in FFmpeg, which I also updated for this, by the way, today. 
Let's check that it really built some aptX. Yeah, that built some aptX. The next thing is we need this Blues Alza backend thankfully also has aptX support. However, it's using this open aptX wrapper thing for this commercial binary only library. So I'm now packaging an open aptX patched version that is using FFmpeg instead of this commercial binary only thing. Let me see where I found this. Yeah, here I think this was probably this. So this is actually some glue building stuff that I saw already earlier. And blues ulcer a dependency, the question is, so but this is just I think uh, external git thing. And this is open aptX with I think support patched in for the FFmpeg stuff. Here, BT aptX FFmpeg. So I'm now going to package this. Okay, it doesn't have a release, so let's see it commits. Package the all channels work now. That was March 27th. Clone or download. It would also be nice if this would be something else in zip, actually. Maybe at GitHub they could also add support for tar archives. So because the thing is with this SPC, as I said, I can usually use the compression artifacts and Right now, I clearly hear that this is way degraded quality. Um, it sounds a bit like running from a cassette tape or something like this. Definitely much less precise and yeah. So let's package this and rebuild it and see if we can get this to work too. Okay, in case I have to patch it a little bit around for the system installed FFmpeg, so... Hmm. It linked. Wonder, will it work? Also need to actually fix this long term for the next build. We need to patch this in the original, I guess, AM file. So then rebuilding blues also. Let's maybe check the log file if it picked up correctly the aptX stuff blues other aptX. Yes. Hmm. Let's see if it works, I would say. So I guess we may have to restart all this. So Okay, headset has connected. Um, so I guess then we can try to play again. No such device. Hmm. It's the joy of Bluetooth, right? Um, just in case you wondered why I'm actually preferring wired connections and headphone jacks. Hmm. Maybe I restart everything. It's, it's not yet working, however, I only wanted to say if it doesn't work and connect, I guess there's some issue with this codec stuff or something. So it appears to be enough to kill this blue ulcer, then this Bluetooth disconnect and restart it. Blue ulcer, and then connect here. At least that worked the last time. Yeah, it said connected and then play works again. So so much to this, but um, maybe it has something to do with the shared library stuff I changed there. Maybe it's not loading all the dependencies or something like this, still investigating. And I indeed got aptX working. However, it took way longer than I wanted, I have to admit. It was uh, a total debugging through all of the details of this. And uh, But now, at least this warning you can ignore. It is just of this placeholder stop thing where we uses patched in FFmpeg stuff and here we have, by the way, when patch work I kind of get used to it, I have to say. Unfortunately, you know, Entrick Phantom touches, but right now it works. And for video demonstrations, of course, really nice, like a whiteboard, right? Also to this debug messages here, we have indeed, this is H, yeah, HCI dump. And according to this, 
we have indeed non-A2 DP applics configured here. And the reason why this didn't work for me here is with this Sennheiser headset. Somehow it tried to configure mono for whatsoever reason and this configuration failed so I just changed the code here actually in blues.c and so I changed the code here, this is a debug print for me and here was join stereo first and then stereo and somehow with this join stereo it was using this and I have the feeling this may be wrong because join stereo is one and maybe this is mono I guess because when this failed we had mono in here in this HTI debug so I guess this is maybe a bug and likely there's something mixed here maybe this is mono and join stereo is something else maybe I don't know one of the other bits anyway um, let me do a quick listening test and see if I can really distinguish this optics because as I said in the beginning some hours ago this SPC codec I can usually hear that it's quite lossy encoded so after endured all this debugging pain here to get this running let me quickly relax listening to some good music and then I tune back in so as a little bonus I also hacked myself here a disable aptX option in there so I can quickly change between the two without recompiling this blues other package. Also I wonder that this defaults to 48 kilohertz so I run this now with a do tp force audio cd which is then configuring this to 44.1 kilohertz which most of the audio material is in so this avoids a simple rate conversion which I think can only be lossy and result in degraded quality so Maybe a lot of people run this also with subpar sample rate conversion. And the reason why this also took so long, so obviously I did not write all this code. So debugging around in this kind of things usually takes some hour of getting used to enabling all the debugging stuff everywhere and recompiling with debugging and figuring out what to read where and how. And so while in the end this is a two line change, not to try to use this joint stereo, which likely is a wrong bit and mono anyway and this headset accidentally not accepting this mono configuration. Um, yeah, with this you lose your afternoon looking into this kind of things. And so now I try to figure out if I can really hear a difference comparing this. I have the feeling, at least in this conflict goal song, if not also in others anyway, that with this SPC codec everything a little bit more mushed together um, like you would maybe expect from a PC speaker one small driver kind of not as clear and well defined so let's see how this goes obviously even with a microphone I can't bring this to YouTube in such a way for you to listen so let's see what I find well I have to say that although it's a little bit better I still have the feeling it's not as clear as a wired connection and then you wonder why I wasn't the greatest fan of all this over complicated Bluetooth wireless nonsense beside cable I just plug in and it works and Bluetooth you need to fiddle around for hours to get all the stuff right beside uh, years of reverse engineering this codec. So one last test here without X and this song. And let's listen to this again. Yeah, I think uh, maybe especially in this Father Lucifer song you can in the vocal parts here with the SPC codec that they are that they have frequencies swinging around uh, some some harmonics and uh, between the physically modeled acoustic model major frequency components some other things swinging around there but yeah anyway I have the feeling that aptX is still not uh, as accurate as a wire you also see this from when you decode this I actually had done this earlier for example here actually I think we can just do this here when we take a look on this conflict girl here that is 44 megabyte and then we decode this flag decode we decode this flag and pipes this into aptX encode that we got from the codec stuff we have there and that was wave let's see if standard in works to one up to x 
Now, maybe it works if we put the dash here. Apt x encode. Okay, is this. Does it work? Maybe. So, that produced a significant smaller file. So, from the 44 megabyte lossless flag file, we get only a 9 megabyte compressed X file. And this probably already shows how much information is lost there. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We finally have aptX on open source, Linux, Unix, BSD, you name it. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, share, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you soon for the next awesome videos to come.